and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a silver master yi versus a silver echo and we're gonna see in this video why master yi's get hyper fed and what we can do to stop it but at the same time you know how do bad junglers consistently get rewarded here and what could we do as maybe the echo as master yi to just be better now the he's gonna start on his blue and go into the grump here we have the echo doing the red into the krugs we're obviously watching the bottom lane he starts zyra gives me pain always q please 12 seconds versus 7 seconds and now the Trindamir is coin flipping topside, which is why you would typically see red side quadrant start here. If you're playing a Kane, even a Yi here, it, it can be advantageous to do your red side into this. But obviously with Trindamir, he wants to stack up his RNG and, and try and win that lane. But you know, like if you're a Kane or something, even an Echo, honestly, Raptors, Red Krugs, Udir, gank this right now. You know, let him hit level two, get the gank off. You'd be perfectly in time. Maybe we could actually do something to really snowball this lane, right? You'd be showing up right now, spin to win, and off we go. The Yi, on the other hand, is just going to be full clearing up. Likewise, the Echo, really slow cross timers from red to uh, blue side, from the Echo, as well as from the blue to the red side. With the Yi, he's going straight for his red, and this is just an unhealthy paranoia. Now, I have it. I explain why, but it gets an echo. I'm not necessarily expecting this. And again, you could just ward late and go start here as well. You don't have to waste the ward here. I mean, the ward here is, is very, very useless. This is a ridiculous regeneration tactic. We do see the top lane being a little low in the echo in the meantime. It's going to his blue and won't be thinking about the fact that the Yi could shop. So this is nice from the Yi in terms of, hey, I'm clearing. I could be full clearing, but I see something I could do. But because we didn't take a different strategy, we're much further behind... Um, well, we could be, but in this case, it's fine, right? It has been the case where your Trindamir actually dies. And, you know, the enemy top laner is healthy enough to deal with you. And what happens is you don't even get this gank off. So we're fortunate enough to get the gank off, but we give away everything here. The Echo, let's see what he does with this information. Probably nothing. We don't need to ping this scuttle crab. The Yi went back to his Krugs. He was low HP, so keep your eyes up. So that you're tracking this kind of stuff. And as always, please consider having a look at my jungle courses on my website, as well as joining us in the private jungle discord. You have access not only to the free jungle improvement PDF, but also weekly coaching classes, lectures, Q and A's, and so much more in addition to all of the jungle video courses included with it. The absolute jungle paradise for all junglers is Vakayu.gg. Junimir has stayed out here with the silent TP, but in the meantime, the Cogmore and the Zyra are actually taking our bottom scuttle. Which uh, I, I don't like, but, you know, we do watch in Korean strategies uh, sometimes. Why? Because if the Echo 4 clears, takes this, and comes on down, he's going to double scuttle us. Now it's gone. So in terms of, hey, my jungler's cut us full clear short and ganking and busy on the other side, let me deny the Echo then and give myself some of that, that juicy vision, right? And now he's a little bit confused about where the Master E is. Shouldn't be, but he will be. Now E will go back to base here upon reset, getting a kill. Echo's going to translate this down to the bottom side. Ezreal's by himself, Lux is in base, we're eing to scan, and are we just going to sit and wait for E? Because now we got 8 seconds on it, so I, I don't know why we would necessarily uh, E in that particular situation to check for the vision. You could just walk in and have a look. E does come up, here we go. Void Puppy will get the kill. There we go. And uh, Zy well, Zyra actually gets the kill, but ah. You know, don't waste your, ga your gap close, your map mobility to get to the brush to scanner. Just walk on over. E resets. We'll observe this and basically most likely keep for clearing. What's this for? You know, you're not against the Kindred, you're not against the Jove, and you're not against the Grave, you're not against the Niddler, you're not against the Shaker. The Echo's not going to run in your jungle and try and kill you 1,200 times. It's just not going to happen. So this ward is better suited to be a bit more aggressive in terms of positioning, right? Because all concept of aggression and passive and things like that can shift depending on the conversation. So in this case... If you wanted to gank bottom lane, we should have ganked bottom lane while the Echo was dead and then fallen back to our camps. Instead, we're staying out to do wolves down to Grump. Now we're in a weird situation where it's like, okay, we're pathing down. Echo full cleared up because we saw his numbers. So most likely he's going to do it again, right? That's logical, I think. Guy's going to do Krog Raptors, keep full sequencing blindly. So we can actually maybe sneak away a dragon here with this bottom lane prior. Keep your observations up. Look at this, look at this, look at them go. There we are in the Echo in the meantime. Are we going to move and do something about this? He's decided to actually move, but in retrospect, not retrospect, real time, you're looking at this, right? You're looking at this in real time, and you're going, well, could I rotate to save them? Is there anything I can do here to help? If you determine no, then get the guaranteed experience, right? Don't react to it unnecessarily and waste your time. You want to maintain control of the map. If the E takes this because of that, then you're able to take this, plus this, plus this, plus maybe gank this. 
in between, before, after, doesn't matter. If you can gank that again, that's great. Now, we know the Master Yi is doing the dragon. The Echo is going to scan and clear this. I think complete waste of time. We should be doing our wolves. We're onto the Gromp. And if we see this at all, we can cut in and do other things. Obviously, the timers for respawns on the top side are very, very different. But don't waste your time trying to steal dragons here. You could have guaranteed experience, which would be all of this. Thumbs up. And here's a tracking thing for everyone in general. Okay? The Master Yi shows top lane with 16. Plus red buff. We know he started on the bottom side. 99.99% the guy did his blue side red buff and then ganked top lane. We then see him move towards this direction. So he's going to Krugs. We do this in the meantime, right? So we know the Krugs are spawning before the Raptors because of the warped sense and the warped timeline. So if you're the Echo and you finish the Gromp up and you see them doing this dragon, you see the Trinity moving on down. Hey, if you have a scanner, use it now. Maybe we can just steal the Krugs. Maybe this is diveable. Maybe this is gankable. Maybe we can just get in here, go for the wall. Like we can go this way, right? And then we can gank this way. Think about the diversity of options you have available to you based upon the lane state, the vision control, who you're trying to gank, who you're trying to play. Simple checklist. And if you do that, instead of waffling and trying to steal the dragon, you're going to be a lot better off in 99% of your game. So as you all know from the pre-roll, we cover all of this in the courses and the Discord all the time, the whatever. So think about these kinds of things. It's huge for you. In the meantime, he has decided to slowly lackadaisically make his way over to the Raptors. I will snack them now. And we have an orange scuttle in the topside river, which again, should already be taken care of. Now we're going to have a fisty fisty over this. LeBlanc just kills a Vagar. Yi decides to go in. The Q doesn't hit on anything from the Echo's perspective. We have to basically assume that the guy doesn't have his W, otherwise he would have used it. Right? And now, the LeBlanc is not paying attention. There's a W coming in. Terribly placed, because we should be able to get the stone. We don't. LeBlanc says, oh, oh, oh. I know you from, I've seen you somewhere. Hmm, champion select, because I haven't looked around the map at all. So LeBlanc misses an opportunity for a free kill, but Yi will be able to get himself a free uh, free scuttle crab here. We can look at the top side and we go, hmm, can we gank this? There we go, son. Off we go. Now it is a level seven Scion. Uh, he does have his ult available. Trinomir does have his ult available as well, so we have to play it properly and stun the Scion with his ultimate, which we of course do. Now we need to try and kill the zombie, but you know what, who cares about that? Echo is on the bottom side. As we see, right? While we do that, which means we should be able to snack something of high importance. He goes there too. Eight minutes, so no plant. So you have to, yes, walk through, but one would hope you scanned on your approach to the top side. So. <sighs> now he's taking this. You know, we're gonna get it anyway, I think. We have to walk around again, but it's just like a waste of time, right? Ring around the rosies. Now, Echo is chunked. He's killed, which is great. No, nope, we don't take it. All right, well, we should have taken it. We give up the blue. He said, fine, I'm going to take the, the Herald, the LeBlanc roams. Okay, all of this is wonderful. Now we've left the Raptor camp randomly spawning by itself because we took that before we went into the river. This should be dead. This should be dead. And now, because the Echo already had his red, most likely he's going to come and take his blue. Let's see if we are correct, because it's silver. Watch me be wrong. Ha! Fortunately not. You know, you'd be in a really great position right now. Vega just kills the LeBlanc. We are to try and get the gap close, which of course we do. Come on, Master. You, you can do it. No stopwatch on the Vega. Oof, oof. I don't think we don't think we needed to flash. I think the red buff would have would have been enough, but you know. We don't talk always about the mechanics here, you know. Where to go for mechanics, Cowsap, when it comes to Master Yi, other Master Yi's and Arius as well. Uh, rank 1 Master Yi player in the world, essentially guys are guarded at climbing the EU West ladder. We made a, I made a piece of content about him, we made it together on the main channel, Scenarius myself last season. That's where you go for that stuff, but for the, for the jungle passing, we're right here and again, like, this is where it falls apart. Do you see silver junglers, bronze junglers, why you're not gold? Because of this. Like, the Echo goes and makes these silly mistakes, right? Now is in a position to actually use the Scion's pressure and the respawn Vega to maybe fight and fist over this because he has spent his gold and uh, the Master East got 2.2k in pocket. So the Echo should be able to snack away a little Herald here. Again, misses the opportunity. Five seconds. Don't wait more than five seconds. And again, why are you waiting? We see her go down. You know, you're not going to be able to get it. Master Yi basically says, hey, there's a dragon spawning, but I kind of think that Herald should be taken. Oh, he sees this as well. It's... 
You know, I don't know what exactly they see. I'm trying to anticipate. I'm not, what do these junglers see on the map that's of interest to them over what I think they should be seeing? Because sometimes that's a bit of a struggle. But that's fine because Echo will get away with this surely. Mercy is able to get their kill on the Scion. He was just driven by Bloodlust. This again should be gone. And even though Scion is 1 HP, if I need to go to the bottom side because I got Wolves, Grub, Dragon, this, 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 plus Herald, I'm not going to run topside to kill a 1 HP Scion with zero camps topside if I did this properly. No, no, I'm not going to do it. Like, it sucks, but I'm going bottom side where all the resources are because going up here to kill a Scion and then moving all the way down with not, saying nothing was available, it's a waste of time, right? It's not worth your investment. You get more gold by doing what I said than by killing the Scion. Especially seeing as the guy's doing that. Yeah. It is that way sometimes. So Echo does get the Herald, shows up to the bottom side here. 349 in pocket, the E is 301. Zyra does the full combo. Okay, goes for that one. I like that one. We forced the flash out. The puppy was not in position for it. Bone damage is going through. We have a, the Ignite used. Master E shows up and says, Ooh, double stacking slow from the Zyra plans. I think I will just kill the Yaka who ults to reposition. Puppy's in a bit of a precarious spot. The Yaka's going to E roll to create space. E's to the minion. Chucks the Q out, gets the kill. Master E says, Hello, can I help you? Zyra hits the planet once more. We use our smite plus our auto attack to get that kill. Cool. And now we can shove this wave. Oh, we don't have Herald. Echo has it. That sucks. That's where we stand. Just go ahead and, well, through the exhaust, make sure you prime your true damage. Before you do that alpha strike, we want to make sure we're getting it as much as possible. Ooh, dodging aggro. There you go. Not bad. Now, we are low enough where I would be a little bit concerned about going for this dragon. So what I would do is I know this guy's going to respawn and come over to his red side quadrant because the red buff is spawning and there's a dragon and they're obsessed over this. So I would just take the Krugs potentially and bounce. There's not much else you can do. And then you can decide to contest later on. Could also take a few plates. Probably should take a few plates, actually. Options. Again, options, right? Diversity of options. Pick the one that makes the most sense for your risk-reward ratio and which one gets you the most juiced. In this case, he decided to go back to his... Well, that's not the option I would have chosen. Probably a lot of plates. Like, ideally, we have plates plus Herald. We can really astro this. You can kind of give up the Krugs, but if you can't take plates because the wave's whiffy or whatever and... Take the Krugs, go back to base. Now, the Echo, in the meantime, does his Krugs. We'll handle his business down there. Again, the, the, the ignoring of objective is something that I really don't like. Now, we have ganked top lane a little bit here as Master Yi, but we could have really snowballed it, and we missed it, and the Echo didn't kind of help the Scion very much. Where are we going? And on, on what journey are we going, Master Yi? Because you're guaranteed experience here. Echo sees you, activates this now. Uh, decides to go down to the dragon because he saw your top side. So you're giving a silver jungler freebies um, with envision. Maybe it's not a freebie. <laughs> there you go. That's a Zyra. There we go. We like that. Now he's rotating over. Ult back in. All right. This is just messy. Very, very messy. Echo's kind of low. Lux is rotating over as well. Mercy says, yo. <laughs> Puppy over the wall. We die. Korean Challenger or Silver? Your choice. Joke. Because in the uh, the current Korean uh, trip that a lot of people were on, there's always these fights over dragons. Um, interestingly, like, I don't necessarily think a lot of those fights are really, they really have a point other than, hey, you know, we have a bit of a lead, maybe we can use it, or, hey, we're behind, we might as well try and get some shutdowns on the dragon. It's not really the dragon that's the goal, it's just the fight that's the goal. Uh, so, it is always interesting to watch. Who likes to fist and fight and be aggressive, but who doesn't when it comes to those things? Puppy chasing down the Ezreal, which is great. There we go. A little bit of the, uh, anyone remember when that was an actual button you had to press? An actual active cutlass you build into it? Good times. Now it's not an active. So we're going to go and <laughs> take that dragon as Master Yi does. Look at the map though from Red Team's perspective here. This is taken, this is taken, but the Yi, despite the sub... Optimal passing and decision making is in a good position, right? A lot of cash money gold. Um, we see this flank we can do now, which is why I don't like this mid lane early so much, right? Because the, the early mid lane take in low elo and a lot of elos forces the mid laner on your team, the Vega in this case, to just shove blindly. Like he doesn't move to other positions and that's what costs him, right? And now that Trinomir is taking our camps, Echo is also taking our camps, hit the plant. You can hit the plant. You can hit... <laughs> he didn't want to. Didn't want to hit the plant. Echo gets 11 from this. Obviously, track the Scion's death, which he has. We have no R. 
Well, that was a little bit weird. Either way, back to base we go. Simon respawns, second Herald is coming. Echo will go down towards the LeBlanc here. Floating and chasing. Floating and chasing. Now, the first kind of thing that I thought from the Echo, hey, that like that's a good move, was this counter jungling, right? Vega was shoved up, so he said, okay, boom, boom. Let me go for the Trinomir, kill him, and then bounce out. Like, that was a good move. I like that. We have a winning sign. Let's shadow that lane. Let's make sure we make the right play. Let's go ahead, take some camps from the E who is fed, not looking to interact with them too much, and bounce. Then I'm going to translate that to the mid lane gank here. Fortunately, the Vega dies. There we go. That one right there, and of course the LeBlanc died over there. Not the Echo, the Echo's fine. <laughs> then Master G's not gonna keep chasing. So it's really just a case of, hey, I have more stats than you. I can outstat you. And I don't mean that in a stat checker sense. I mean in terms of I have more gold, I have more experience, I know how to use it, I have more map pressure, and so on and so forth, right? That's the whole point of the game, gold and experience. And when you are Master E who probably scales top three with gold and experience in the game in terms of snowball, you just want to make sure you're getting as much as possible. And we're 10-1-1, 18 minutes, 9,000 gold, we're in a good position. So the rotation to kills, I like that, that was good. The missed opportunity for Harold, that sucks because that gives him the 9,000 gold like two, three minutes sooner. The elevation of game state obviously allows him to not have this negative map where you've got this kind of like shoved in all the time. Uh, so he could have balanced the map out a little bit with some better decisions as we stuff to type an essay. Wait for the Grump. Like, if you're doing that, that's probably not good. You should probably look to do something other than uh, walk around uh, doing nothing or standing still doing nothing. Either way, never do nothing. In this particular case, everybody's dead. Maybe I can take something. Maybe I can push a wave. Go mid lane, push a wave. Go take the second Herald before Baron spawns. Echo is deciding to go for that. I think at this point, he's just like, you know what? I'm 2-4-3. I might as well try just because it's worth the attempt for me. Um, he actually gets it. All three position picks up the Herald... Uh, no, he doesn't. The Scion does. <laughs> and they're able to get the kill on the Blanc from the rotation. And we kill the Trinomir. So, nice risk there from the Echo. Because we know, look, we're losing a little bit in the jungle diff department. They have prior, but I can sneak this away while he's somewhere else. And my team can maybe rotate to help me. Which they do. And we get the Herald and we get the kills. So, pretty good. He, in the meantime, says, look. You should say, look. You should say, look, there's nothing I can do. All right? Sequence, get your cash money gold. Cogmo's bot lane, we're without the LeBlanc, they have everybody available, we have no Trinomir, we have no numbers, get your guaranteed experience. Don't look for stuff right now. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. Take your red, take your Krugs, shadow this Herald play to ensure, right, that you don't die, first and foremost. Okay, well... <sighs> see, this is what I'm saying. We get rewarded for this. I don't want to be rewarded for this. We just sequence up, we can hold the wave, get experience. If someone wants to go aggressive on us and we can kill them, we will. So the Echo's decision here is like, hey, let me go and make an aggressive play, cool. But you don't win one-on-one -on -one at this particular stage, or at any stage now. You don't win one-on-one, -on -one, so don't make the play. The Echo cannot afford to do this. What he has to do is shadow the Scion and play with the Scion. Use his W properly with the Scion. He has to go together against Mercy Yi versus just simply trying to invade 1v1. So Echo makes another big mistake. He gets away with it because he can, because he is that fed. And um, here we are. Zyra pushing mid lane. Yeah. Kog'Maw shows top lane here. He's going back to base, and the Kog'Maw might overcommit and die. Ooh, he doesn't. He lives. Shouldn't, but he does. Next up, Dragon is spawning. So, back to base. Everyone's rotating down. Right, so you want to be strong for these fights. We see the Echo there, good vision. Can probably snack this up for free. No one's in position from the blue team. Watch the Lux ult. Oof, good Zyra jump. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. Now, uh, the Scion is full AD with Hullbreaker. So dude is going to be strong. But we do have true damage in our kit. That's why I hate this build. Now, while he did that, which is fine... I just love a good, meaty, tanky, beefy Scion, because when played properly, it's some of the best stuff to have on your team. I'd rather have... Now, it's, it's, in this case, it's good because him killing the Yi is great, right? Because if you look at the rest of the game, you're like, oh, okay, Ezreal has, Ezreal's, you know, well, about the same, but doing well. is gonna scale. Um, Echo can still do stuff. We have here uh, a Lux that can also wave clear and do stuff. Like, you have decent ways to wave clear, deal with pressure, and so on. You got a decent comp. So if we can kill the Yi, maybe they can do something. But 
What if the Yi doesn't rotate? What if the Yi's just killing your whole team and they need a big old beefy Scion to actually do some peeling? That's why I prefer it. But that was a lot more Scion damage than I expected. I will not... I will not lie. It always surprises me. <laughs> it does. Uh, we have Axiom. This is a tech, though. Dustblade and Axiomark. That's the tech that you want to think about. Um, Blue Cane especially. It works a Nocturne, although, again, not highly recommended. Uh, just... It's really broken and strong. Really is. Blue side being snacked now. Okay. Essentially, I don't necessarily know what the blue team can do here. They can make the picks. Like, again, someone's out of position here. If it will load. You know, LeBlanc's out of position. They see this. She goes in. Nice stun by the Lux. Echo shows up to get the kill. That's great. Kog'Maw is being chilling over here, doing nothing. He is just farming his own econ while they kind of stagnate, which is great. When everyone stagnates here, you just want to get your own econ. And because the Scion is going to push by himself... Oh, 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 there it is. Really is a lot of damage, isn't it? But because you can kill him pretty quickly, because he is squishy, they have two bottom lane. The Scion, you've got to push parallel, which means you want teams to push together like you're gonna have someone here maybe one you're gonna have three there and sign here so as the sign commits to this and they send four to kill him you as the blue team are now taking this you're sieging this you're rotating down to this you're falling back you keep the continuous pressure but because everything was pushed in when sign makes this play he just dies and does a bit of damage but they don't get anything else and that's that's the most important thing from blue team's perspective and red team can leverage that because no one in silver is gonna know that so this is what we do this is what we do. Now, we are trapping. At this point, this is fine early. Uh, but I would have a scanner because you can't guarantee that the support's gonna... <laughs> the support's gonna face check the brush. Um, oh, that was close. Yeah, make sure you have a scanner if you're gonna do this in the late game, yeah. The, the wards are great early for tracking, but here a scanner. You want to make sure that you're seen or not seen. In this particular case. But as you can see, sometimes it doesn't evolve into fights. Especially if you have a split pusher. Like, he's going to keep pushing now. We'll speed it up a little bit. Echo's going to run to the mid lane here. By himself. There you go. Nice pick by the LeBlanc. Trinomy's going to try and get that kill. Um, Sionis is going to keep pushing. Master Yi is forced to go back to base. See, Master Yi was low. So to leave the scenario. Which takes him out of this game. A little bit. But they're pushing mid lane, which is great. He can hold this, hopefully. Let's see. Like, ideally, you want to alpha his Q so you don't get knocked up in the first place, but, you know, we got the kill. We got the inhib. Nice. Fall back to Dragon. Good job, bottom lane. Good shove. You know, the pick into pressure. There's no team fighting right now. This is great for Mercy. More econ for ourselves. We're at uh, 13,000 gold now. Dragon's going to respawn. And we're going to try and go for this. Vega's going to show up and uh, Echo's going to go for the wall to steal it. That's fine, but what cost? That's Baron. That's Baron. Let's go. Go Baron. Go go Baron. <laughs> I mean, I guess you can keep chasing. We can do the LCS where we can keep chasing. You could end the game in theory. If there's any doubt about this, just go to the Dragon. Because again, the Lux has Wave Clear. The Scion has macro threat and pressure with his TP. Well, it doesn't have it currently. Um, you know, here, yeah, we can't end. Just go Baron. Like, that's my first instinct. I saw them and I was like, eh, maybe, but... Usually your first instinct on these things usually will be correct in game. You'll know like, hey, we because like, look at this. You gotta look at the size of the wave. What range do we have? Who's alive? If you ace them or it's like just a Vega alive, yeah, we can do something. But the Lux is the issue. So just go Baron. It's free. So that that's my first inclination was Baron. And uh, now we go lazy base. So people die. And then they're going to get shut down. The Mercy is going to kill them. See, if it's a Vega available, we can just kill him and end. But... The Lux creates a big issue for us. Likewise, so did the Scion. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, everybody died. Who could have foreseen this event? Yeah, that's for the Inkling. I said, go Baron. In my mind, it's just a safer play in Silver. And most people don't know when they can end. And like, if I'm Mundo here, I'm just with Alt up, I'm just going to run the Lux down, kill her, and we'll end. No stress. No stress. But. Without that on my team, with no real tank to actually tank the turret, to tank the damage, uh, yeah. Better just to go for the 
the Baron. And then you can obviously siege and push afterwards. San against but pushing for no real purpose will die. Okay, we have mitted him down so we can push the bottom lane up a little bit. In theory, you could lose a, a Baron here, but as you can see, not the case. So he would just go for the push. Zyra sp pu uh, split pushing on the top side. Vago shows up and kills her. Shouldn't have happened. Echo's just taking camps, not thinking about it. Yeah, I like what they use doing here. I like this, just push. Push gets strong. There you go. They're worried about the Baron. You can kill anybody. Force a rotation. Very good. Now we can cut up and do it. Yep. Not bad. Like, not always a fan of the cross country, but in this case, not so bad, right? Because you force rotations. But you got to pull the trigger. I feel like you got to go. Like, we should be doing this right now. You solo it. Like, you can solo it straight up. So we should have finished already. And now you can hold the sign pretty easily. Still able to do it, though. This is not bad, though. Honestly, like, this is actually not bad. If, if these players can be consistently like this, you should be able to get to gold. Um, obviously, there's optimization issues, right? We all know this, but... You know, using macro pressure is obviously the best way for you to do things. Like, the soul is important from the blue team's perspective. I did my job, says Masty. I did my job. I took three of them. And now Trinomir can hopefully shove an end. That should be that. Cogmo should not be bottom side necessarily, but uh, because of the respawn times, it works out. Hey, this is what we talk about. One, three, one. Have three people, have one, have one, and then just kind of split the, the, the pressure points. So this was an interesting game, actually. Kind of liked what they were doing. Obviously, optimizations, and the Yi 19-4-4 made his... He did his job. He got the kills. He didn't int. But definitely was punishable early by the Echo, and he didn't really do it. And he also didn't fully punish the Echo in a way... I know the Echo's 476, but there's a few other things we could have done that really just makes the game 25 minutes, not 31. And obviously, again, like, uh, can we end? Can we not end? If you don't know, just go Baron. It's free. Take it. Take their stuff. Back to base. A lot of gold. <laughs> Same kind of thing. So, there you go. Another video showcasing silver, low elo jungling, and how you can get to gold. And if you want more on this implementation, Vakayo to GG for all of those resources. And as always, I will see you all in the next one.